Whenever and wherever there is a decline of religious principles and a predominant rise of irreligion, at that time I declare myself. Paritranaya sadhunam vinas chaya chetuskritam dharma samstarpanaktaya sambhavami yuge yuge. Lord Krishna describes that in order to deliver the pious as well as to annihilate the miscreants and establish the principles of religion, I bent myself millennium after millennium. Some people fail to understand that the Lord can appear in the Kali Yuga. This was discussed by Gopinath Acharya along with his brother-in-law Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was saying that the Lord is three yuga, that he only comes in three yugas. Three yuga is one of the names of the Lord, meaning one who comes in the three yugas the Satya Yuga, the Treta Yuga, and the Dwapa Yuga. The Lord doesn't come in Kali Yuga. However, Gopinath Acharya corrected Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. He told him, he said, you don't know the philosophy. The Lord comes in every age. There are no Leela avatars in the Kali Yuga, but the Lord does come. There are the Yuga avatars, and the Lord comes in the Kali Yuga. 
to establish the process of religion, the Yuga Dharma, for the, this age. And of course this, this is confirmed with evidence from the Srimad Bhagavatam. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the 11th canto, you have conversation between Karabhajana Muni and Maharaj Nimi. Nini Raj. So Nini Raj was inquiring from the nine Yogendras, the Navyogendras. And from the Navyogendras is Karapachana Muni, he is one of the nine Yogendras. He was replying to these questions of Maharaj Nini. Maharaj Nini wanted to know about the Lord's incarnations in each age. So Karabhajana Muni described how in every age the Lord comes in a different color. In the Satya Yuga he comes to teach the process of sacrifice, or rather meditation. In the Satya Yuga the process is meditation. You can see the example in the Bhagavatam third canto. There is Devahuti's husband, Kardama Muni. Kardama Muni, he did Astanga Yoga and he was doing meditation 10,000 years. So 10,000 years, not very long time in the Satya Yuga. Because Satya Yuga, people will live. How Satya Yuga, who knows? How long do people live in the Satya Yuga? Do you know? Huh? 100,000. Yes, right. One life. One life. 100,000. Right? That's how long people live in the Satya Yuga. So, Kadama Muni spent 10,000 years doing meditation. Astanga Yoga. Right? You do yoga, right? You have to sit straight. Right? Sit like a yogi. Right? And you don't go to sleep. Right? You sit up straight. Right? The back straight. And then you have to, then you can do the pranayama. Pranayama can live a long time like that. You want to live a long time? Don't blame me. <laughs> Not a good idea. Anyway, in the Satya Yuga, people lived a long time. And they did this meditation. Asana, they would meditate a long time. You know, Pranayama when you did it. So, that's the Satya Yuga. Treta Yuga, different process because the duration of life was reduced. From 100,000 years in the Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, how long did people live? Huh? 10,000. 10,000, yes. It was reduced 90%. Wow, what's a big reduction, huh? Just imagine, if you were getting paid one life, and they say, we have to reduce your salary, we're only going to give you 10,000. Instead of one life, the salary to 10,000. Whoa. So, the life is reduced, 10,000 years. To 10,000 years. So, different process. What do they do in the Dwapara Yuga? Or Chaita Yuga, rather? They do sacrifice. They do homas. Agni Homa, like that. Swaha, like that. They do, you know, have you done? So, difficult to do. Maharaj Yudhisthira had a hard time. In he, ruler, then he had to send his brothers everywhere gold in order to do the yajna. 
to do Raja Siddhi Yajna. You need a lot of money to do Yajna. And the Brahmanas, that's another problem. You have to can chant the mantras nicely. Right? Are you able to chant the mantras good? Om Pavitra Pavitra Vam Sarvavastanta Opiva Yasnarat Pundarikaksham Abhayantara Suchi Sri Vishnu Like this, you have to chant all the mantras. You have to chant them perfectly. And you could sacrifice the animal, and the animal will come back in a young body. The animal will be rejuvenated. So, that was Trika Yuga. Then Dwapara Yuga comes. After Trika Yuga comes Dwapara Yuga. The process is reduced again. The life is reduced. From 10,000, Dwapara Yuga, how long did he live? 1,000 years, right, 1,000 years. So, again, 90% reduction. So, one year, life is 1,000 years. They cannot do yajyas, they're not rich enough, the brahmanas are not powerful enough. So, process is given, temple worship, archana, the worship of the deity in the temple. That was in Dwapara Yuga. Get people to go to temple. If people come to the temple, they will behave. They will know, oh, this is the temple. We have to be pure. We have to be clean. We have to not, not speak any bad words. Don't speak like bad language or anything. Must be truthful. Because this is a temple. If you tell a lie in the temple, very bad. So, Dwapara Yuga, temple worship. And then Kali Yuga comes. In Kali Yuga, very difficult to get people to go to temple. Although there are so many people, how many people go to temple? Not many. So, how to help the people in the Kali Yuga? They don't have money to do big sacrifices. They don't have the long life. Kali Yuga, the life is from 1,000 years reduced to 100 years. Maximum. And most of us will never see 100. Thank goodness. <laughs> bad enough, bad enough to be 50, <laughs> when you get to 60 and 70, then wow, shoot, big problem, the 100, you can imagine what the body is like, how you're, how you're in difficulties with the body, so Kali Yuga, difficult times, there are no brahmanas, there are no good qualities, the people are all irreligious, the people are described in the Kali Yuga, Manda, Samanda Makaryo, Manda, Bhagya, Upadruta, lazy, misguided, unlucky, above all, everyone is dis. Third, no one has peace of mind. And of course, prayena payusha usatya kalo vasmin yuge jana. We have a short life. We don't even have a long life. The life is short. So, how to deliver the people in the Kali Yuga? So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes to teach everyone how to get out from this world of samsa, the world of birth and death, simply by Kirtan. Srimad Bhagavatam says, Kaleya dosha nige rajan astihe ko mahaguna kirtana deva krishna shya 
Mokta Sangha Param Prajet. Kale Dosha Nide Rajan, Dosha. This age of Kali is an age of faults. Right? If you do your astrological chart, right? Have you done your astrological chart? Did you check your chart? Did you look at your chart? Did you see your chart? You know, if you look at your chart, you'll probably see, oh, dosha. Oh, there's a dosha. Oh, there's another dosha. Oh, so many doshas. Dosha means faults, right? So many faults, many problems. So, very bad chart. Kali Yuga. So, the Kali Yuga, an ocean of faults. What were the faults? Lazy, misguided, unlucky, always disturbed. All of these things, these are our faults, very common. And then of course all the other things are there too. Uh, no mercy, no truthfulness, no austerity, and no clean. Uh, Cleanliness, mercy, truthful, austerity. Cleanliness, mercy. No mercy, no cleanliness, no austerity, no truthfulness. We're very weak in all the good qualities, all the religious qualities. We're very lacking. How will we ever get out of this material world? So, Shastra said, Kirtanad Eva Krishna. Mukta Sangha Param Simply by Kirtan, by the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu emphasized the chanting and he told everyone, Hari Nam, Hari Nam, Hari Nam, Eva Kebalam. Hello, Nasteva, Nasteva, Nasteva. Get to it, Anyata. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu quoted the scriptures, Kali Santara Upanishad. That there's no other way in the Kali Yuga, there's no other way to get success in this age except by chanting. And that's why the verse says, Nasteva Nasteva Gatir and Nasteva 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 Gatir and Nita said three times Hari Nama Hari Nama Hari Nama three times. Why three times? To emphasize, to emphasize, to bring home that there is no other way but by the chanting of the holy name. You have we have to take shelter of this kirtan very important for all of us to chant the holy name and have regular kirtan. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so merciful that he has given us this process in the Kali Yuga which we can all practice. You don't have to come to the temple. You don't have to be in the temple to do kirtan. You can go anywhere. You can go in the park and chant. You can be at home, in your home and chant. You can be in the streets, you can chant. You can be in your office, you can be chanting. Any place and any time. The Holy Name is so merciful that it's available to us at any time. If you're going to chant the Gayatri Mantra, there's a time. There's a time to chant, to do the sadhana. But to chant the Holy Name, there's no fixed time. You can chant any time, in any place. You can chant in the day and in the night. You can chant inside or outside. You can chant on your own or you can chant with many other people. 
with other people, with more people, it becomes Sankirtan. Not just Kirtan, but Sankirtan is where the people come together to chant the holy name. And then it becomes very powerful. The chanting of the holy name becomes more powerful. The more, the merrier. The more people, the more powerful the Kirtan. Of course, the people have to take part in the Kirtan. It's not that we should just be there and just stand there, but we have to chant. We have to take part in the Kirtan. So chanting the holy name is very important. This is the great gift in the Kali Yuga. People in general in the Kali Yuga are quite ignorant about these they don't know the value of the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. People are not educated. They're educated in watching movies. They're educated in playing football. They're educated in politics. They're educated in gambling. They're educated in so many nonsense activities. But something which is good for them, they don't know. They have no education. They cannot understand the importance of chanting the holy name. So the Krishna Consciousness Movement is trying to make that propaganda. Right? We, are, we, like, we like to do propaganda work. You will see other political parties, they're doing their propaganda, some politician making propaganda, some sportsman is making his propaganda. So we also make our propaganda. We try to promote Krishna, the holy name of Krishna, and the worship of Krishna, and the books about Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke to Haridas Thakur and Lord Nityananda. Right? In the book, there's a book called Chaitanya Bhagavat. Suno Suno Nityananda Suno Haridas Pratikari Giri Giya Korore Bhiksha Bolo Krishna Bajo Krishna Koro Krishna Shiksha Lord Chaitanya called Haridas Thakur and Lord Nityananda. They were his two great generals in the Sankirtan movement. And he called them and said, listen, listen Haridas and Nityananda, listen. I want you to go to every gully and every street and go through every alleyway and knock on all the doors. And when you open the door, then you have to fall at their feet. And fall at their feet, grab their lotus feet, and then beg them, Bolo Krishna, Bajo Krishna, Koro Krishna. Lord Nityananda would do it. Lord Nityananda was not a small, frail man. He was a big man, powerful, strong, but very humble. And he would go to the door, he would knock on the door. The people would look at who, who is it? What? And Lord Nityananda would say, your life will be successful. The human life is very special. We have to understand we are very fortunate to have the human form of life. You know, some people may think, oh, I'm very fortunate, I'm living in Singapore, it's a modern city, you know, we're very comfortable here, we have our apartment, we have our home and our car, we have good schools, we have good hospitals, I have my insurance, I'm happy here. How long can you stay here? 
you have to understand the nature of this human life and the nature of the material world. Lord Krishna says, Abrahma Bhuvana Loka Punarabhatano Arjuna Mamu Paitya Tukuntiya Punarjanma Navindit From the highest planet. What is the highest planet? Highest planet in the material world, which planet is it? Brahmalok, right. Brahmaloka, topmost planet. So from Abrahma Bhuvnaloka Punarabhatano are from the highest planet down to the lowest. All are places of birth and death. You take birth and death. Even on the topmost planet, Lord Brahma also has to worry. He knows he's only going to live 100 years. Of course, 100 years of Brahma's time is much longer than 100 years of our time. But still, he also has to give up the body. He has to leave the world at some point. And after a hundred years, then there starts to be there starts the end of the world, the death, the the annihilation of the world, the universe. There is creation, there is maintenance, and there is destruction. So this is the nature of the material world. The world maintained for some time and then it's annihilated. There's destruction. There is devastation. So Lord Brahma has to prepare for that, to get out, to leave this place. Not only Lord Brahma, all of us, we have to understand the nature of this material world that it is temporary. Lord Krishna explained in the Bhagavad Gita that for one who has taken birth has to die. And when we're dead, we will take birth again. Because actually we don't die. Only the body dies. And the body is only the dress of the person. We are not the body, we are the soul. We have to understand who we are, our real self. Lord Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita, Vacham si jarnani yata vihaya Nabhani grenati naraparani Tata sharirani vihaya jarnani Anyani samyati navani dehi. Just like we change the dress, so we change also the body. From childhood to youth to old age, the body changes. And the same way, at the time of death, we give up one body, we will take another body. Just like maybe you say, well, I'm only 30 or 40 years old now. So, all right, you're 30 or 40 years old now. But where were you 50 years ago? Now you're here. The last 30 or 40 years you may, be, you may have been here in Singapore. But where were you 50 years ago? Do you remember? We don't remember. Previously we had a body. Where were we? We were in some other place. We were in some other body. Now we have this body. Now we have also the association of devotees. And with the association of devotees, we have the opportunity to cultivate consciousness of Krishna. 
Why consciousness of Krishna? Because Krishna is the supreme absolute truth. There is no truth higher than Krishna. Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, Lord Ganesh, Durga, they are all great personalities, but they are also part and parcel of Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna is the super soul who expands himself into the form of Vishnu and then as Vishnu he expands into the heart of all living entities including the Devas. We have to understand Lord Krishna's position that he is the supreme truth. He says himself in Bhagavad Gita Lord Krishna is saying, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests on me, just like pearls are strung on a thread. Just like we're wearing, the, some of you are wearing the kunti mala around the neck. The Tulsi Mala, very important, the devotees, we like to put the Tulsi around our neck because it will protect us, right? At the time of death, if, even if we are not able to chant Hare Krishna, if we have the Kunti Mala on our neck, the Yamaduks will not come. They have been told, don't go to those people who have got the kunti, who are wearing the tosti around their neck. Right? If you don't have tosti around your neck, then you might be in trouble. The Yamadutas may come, take you. So, you have, it's good to be tosti. But the point is the tosti beads are on a thread. We don't see the thread, we only see the beads. But the beads are held by the thread. In the same way, we see this world, but we don't see how Krishna is holding everything together in this world. Everything is resting on Him, just like the beads are on a thread. Lord Krishna is the highest truth. And simply by remembering Him and being conscious of Him, then we can go to be with Him. You can go out from this world of birth and death and go into the other world, beyond this world, where there is no birth and death. But to go there, you have to be, you have to surrender. As Bhagavad Gita said, you have to surrender. Lord Krishna says, as you surrender, I reward you accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all this way. So surrender is what is the main point of Bhagavad Gita. How to surrender? It begins with this, the Japa mouth. You have to chant the holy name. Chanting is the beginning of our spiritual life and chanting is also the perfection of our spiritual life. When we chant the holy name, then we are communicating directly with Lord Krishna. We want to make a habit, we have to develop the habit Habits are very important. Just like people have the habit, some people have the habit, drink coffee, smoke cigarettes, watch television. Some people will have a lot of bad habits, as we said, doshas, the faults, but many faults. We want to get rid of these faults. We want to develop good habits. So the good habit comes when you start to chant the holy name, 
you start to remember the Lord and chant the mantra. Chant a mantra, very important, because that mantra can save us. Just like Gajendra, the elephant. Gajendra was a big, powerful elephant. And he was living in the heavenly planet. And he had a very nice entourage. He had many female elephant wives. And they had many baby elephants. And one day, they all, they all went to bathe in a beautiful lake where there were lotus flowers. So the elephants were enjoying cool water and throwing the water on each other. And then after they'd enjoyed and refreshed themselves, they came out of the water. But as Gajendra came out of the water, this big crocodile appeared and it grabbed his legs. And the crocodile has got big jaws with many teeth. And they clapped on the leg of Gajendra. He got the leg of Gajendra. The elephant couldn't go because the crocodile was holding him. He wouldn't let him go. And the elephant was screaming and fighting with the elephant. The cro crocodile and the elephant had a big battle. And they fought for a long time. And none of the other elephants could help him. He was alone. He was the king of the elephants. And this crocodile got him right in his jaws. And he won't let go. An elephant was getting weak because they were fighting in the water. And the water is the home of the crocodile. So the crocodile was getting stronger, but the elephant was getting weak. Just like if you play for a team, maybe, you know, if you play football or something, if you play at home, it's more than your advantage to be on your home ground. But when you go away from home, then it's more difficult. So similarly, the crocodile was away from home. He was in the water. He was fighting. Rather, the elephant was away from home and he was in the water fighting this crocodile. He could not defeat the, couldn't get free of the crocodile. They fought for a long time. Gajendra was helpless. What to do? But somehow he remembered from his previous life. In his previous life, he had been a king and he learned a mantra and he was, this mantra was a prayer to the Lord. So he recited this prayer to the Lord and when he recited the prayer, the Lord came riding on the back of Garuda and the Lord Vishnu came with his Sudarshan Chakra and he threw the Sudarshan Chakra. The Sudarshan Chakra came and cut the mouth of the crocodile and freed Gajendra. Was Gajendra happy when the crocodile was killed? Was Gajendra happy? What do you think? Was he happy? No? Why not? He killed the crocodile. But the crocodile was going to kill him? Was he happy? What did he, he said, freed me. And so he regretted. Just like Dhruva Maharaj also regretted. Dhruva Maharaj also re regretted going to the Lord to ask for a kingdom. He regretted. Why did I ask for this kingdom? Rule the kingdom. You may think, oh, it must be good fun to be the king, rule the kingdom. No. A lot of trouble, a lot of headaches. You have to take care of all the problems and deal with all the issues. So much trouble. Why didn't I just ask for liberation? Just get me out from this world. 
Good. We have to be very careful how we approach the Lord. What do we want to get from Him? I don't want anything. That's very good. You don't want anything? But actually there is something we do want. We should, and we should pray for it. This one man came to Prabhupada. The one man, he was a missionary. But he was saying to Prabhupada, he was saying, Swamiji, what to pray for? What to pray for? And Prabhupada told him, we should pray for, what should we pray for? Devotional service, birth after birth, right? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches us, Nadanam, Najanam, Nasundarim, Kavitamba, Jagadisha Kamaye, Mama Janmani, Janmanishwari, Bhavatat Bhakti, Ahaiti Bhita. Oh, mighty Lord, I have no desire to accumulate wealth, nor do I want to have many followers. Or I don't want to be praised with beautiful songs. I simply want your devotional service, birth after birth. So Mahaprabhu teaches us not even to ask for liberation. We just simply want devotional service, birth after birth. So birth after birth, we want to chant the holy name, we want to take part in the kirtan, we want to read the books about Krishna, we want to worship Krishna. That is the life of the devotee. That is the, the real medicine for the heart. And that will take us out from this material consciousness, from this bodily concept of life. In the bodily concept of life, we're only thinking, how much money have I got? How many bills have I got to pay? What about my children? What about my wife or my husband? What about my home? What about my relatives? We're only thinking mundane issues material problems, the bodily conception of life. We're thinking, I am this body, and this is mine. My home, my family, my money, all of this is mine. This is the ignorance of the bodily consciousness of life. We want to come to the higher consciousness that I am Krishna. Krishna is the Supreme Lord, He is the proprietor, and I want to be His servant. Please engage me in His service, birth after birth. This is the need of the soul. This is what can save us from material life. Material life is not very pleasant. People, how long you will be happy in this world? Oh, you have the beautiful children. They will grow up and leave you. They're not going to stay with you all their life. They're going to go away. You have a good job. One day you're going to retire. One day you'll be out of the job. It's not eternal. Your bank balance cannot save you from disease and death. And you cannot take it with you to the next life. So we have to understand the need of the human life. What we really need is service to Krishna. And it is available to us. All the time, everywhere, every moment. We just have to take advantage to chant the holy name and to hear and worship Krishna and read the books about Krishna. So, are there any questions? Anyone? Any comment? Everybody agree, right? Everyone agrees. Yes? 
We are all going to stand. Yes, Prabhu. Use the senses in the service of the proprietor of the senses. Whatever we have, we should understand it's not mine. It belongs to Krishna. I have to use it in his service. That is Vairagya. Vairagya is not like the monkeys. The monkeys Vairagya. That is the Makata Vairagya. Monkey, monkey renunciation. Oh, monkeys are very renowned. They live in the tree and they're going naked. But they're very nonsense, stupid creatures. And they just give trouble to everybody. So, we don't want Markita Vairagya. And you don't want Masana Vairagya, which is the renunciation of the crematorium. You go to the crematorium and we watch somebody's body being cremated and we think, oh yes, this life, you know, is meaningless. It's all, our life is finished so easily, life is over. What is the point? Why I should work hard? Any moment can be life finished, everything lost. When you go to crematorium, you think like that. And then a few hours later, you're at home and you're thinking, oh, yeah, let's go to party, let's go and enjoy, let's go to the marriage, let's go to this program, and we're thinking about enjoyment. So like that, we forget. The re mood of renunciation is very temporary. So that is smasana vairagya. Smasana vairagya. Renunciation of the crematorium. And false go by the idea, false renunciation, false renunciation. The man is working in the bank, and he sees all the money there. He says, "I renounce all this money. I renounce it. It's not his money. How he can renounce it? I renounce it. What is ours to renounce? Nothing is ours. But yukta by idea. Whatever we have." Use it for the service of Krishna. That is actual renunciation. So Mahaprabhu taught that kind of renunciation. He used everything in the service of Krishna. He didn't teach people that they have to give up the world. That is Maya Bada Tanya. They give up the world. They say Brahman Satyam Jagat Mitya. I renounce the world, we give up the world. But we say the world belongs to Krishna and use it for his service. Nirvanda Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagya Uchate. Actual renunciation is to utilize everything in the service of Krishna. So that is actually Vairagya. And then Vidya, what is actually Vidya? There is vidya and avidya. So avidya is ignorance. Ignorance is to think the body and the material world. And vidya 
is transcendental, to understand who is the proprietor, who is the master of everything. So we study literature like Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya Charitamri, these books, and we get transcendental knowledge, we get real vidya, real wisdom, learnings, because it's written Bhagavad Gita are the words of Krishna and the Srimad Bhagavatam are the words of the Ash written in glorification of Lord Krishna. So we want to cultivate Vairagya and Vidya and we cultivate Vairagya and Vidya simply by the practice of Bhakti Yoga. Srimad Bhagavatam says Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Jnana yati atu vairagyam jnanam chayat ahai tukam. That simply by doing bhakti yoga, you automatically acquire knowledge, causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. Everything comes by practice of bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga means hearing and chant. Shravanam kirtan Krishna. You have to hear and you have to chant about Vishnu or Krishna. Then everything comes. Vairagya and Vidya will automatically go. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu was by Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. He said, Vairagya Vijani Bhakti Yoga, Shikshakta Eka Purusha Purana, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Charyara Dari, Kripambu Diryastram Aham Prapati. I surrender to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it's an ocean of mercy, and he has come to teach us causeless knowledge and detachment from this world by practice of Bhakti Yoga. The bhakti yoga, that is what we're practicing. It means hearing shravanam and kirtan. It's the beginning, the roots of bhakti yoga, the foundation. Just like the temple is built on a foundation, so our bhakti is built on foundation. And the foundation comes when you do good hearing and chanting regularly. You have to hear, you have to chant. You have to chant the holy name, you have to chant the prayers to the devotees. We have to also hear Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam regularly. People say, oh, so big a book, whoa, I cannot read so big a book. It's all right. You, you don't have to read the whole book in one day. You read it gradually. You want to understand what the book is teaching. So we say more important than reading is discussing. Just like today we have come together and we are discussing Bhakti Yoga. We are discussing topics of Krishna. And so by discussing together then we can develop more consciousness of Krishna. Yes, any other question? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandava Sana. Maharaj, I have a very common question. Um, just now you mentioned that Nikanat Maharaj and Nikanat Prabhu went uh, to the uh, doors of people and begged them to chant. Um, at the same time, Srila Prabhupada also taught us that we should not talk about Krishna and what we are practicing here with the mundane people. How to interpret this and how to uh, how to balance it? If we want to uh, tell what we are doing in our sadhana here, um, how can we simply tell them to make them easily understand that what we are doing here about our chanting. 
Yes. Well, you have to you have to be able to create a good impression. People should be attracted when they see you chanting or when they see you doing your sadhana. They should be impressed and they should think that, oh, you're you're practicing this, you're very, you appear to be very serious and very devotional. You should impress people by your behavior and by your practice of the, the chanting of the holy name and so on. You know, people should see that you, even that you have changed. Maybe you were not chanting before and then you begin chanting. So people should see how much you have changed for the better by taking to the chanting process. That is for people who know you, that they should see that there's some improvement in you, that before you used to get very angry, or before you used to be irritable and lazy, and now you're so different. You know, they should be they should see a change in you. That you really, now you're so happy and you're very enthusiastic and you're always working and, you know, I can see a lot of changes in you, what happens? And so when they see, like that, they see some change in you, then you can explain to them that, yes, I've taken up Krishna consciousness. So we do want to attract people and people will be looking and noticing what are you doing, how do you, how do you behave and so on. So if they're impressed, then they'll want to know more. But at the same time, if we don't impress them, if we give them a bad impression, they'll want to keep away. So, the first impressions are very important. We say like that, you know, first impressions have a big impact on people. So you do want to be conscious and careful and try to act in such a manner that you can uh, impress on people the values of Krishna consciousness. Give them a good impression. That you're Maybe you have a family, and they see your family, are all happy, and you're very clean, and uh, respectable people. And so then, they will think, oh, you're very nice. They'll be interesting. So, we want to try to give the holy name to people. For people we don't know, then, we, we do have to somehow create a relationship with them. You have to be willing to reach out to people, somehow to, to make some kind of friendship with them, and to show some caring and concern for them. Sometimes, you know, we're very mercenary in our approach to people. And we, we approach them and say, how much can you give? <laughs> no, you give them a book and you tell them it's not free. <laughs> you have to pay for it. You know? Give me the book back. You don't want to pay. <laughs> give me a back. You know, it, it, it doesn't create a very good image. Although that's how we began the movement. In the beginning of our movement, we had to do like that. You know, we, we, we could not manage to give away the books. Nowadays, it's a little different. Nowadays, you know, generally, our movement is not so poor, and most of the devotees, most of the members of our congregation have jobs, they have some, you know. Previously, in, you know, when I joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement in the long ago, 1970s, we were just selling books on the street and that was how we maintained the temple. 
But now we don't have that kind of problem. The temple maintains without being supported by book distribution. Now, so nowadays in many places we try to sponsor book distribution. And we even give the books to people. And we tell the person, look, I'll give you the book. If you don't like it, you can give it back to me. You tell them like that, and if you want to borrow the book to read it, you can borrow it, you can read it back, you can read it. You can simply say it like that to me. And often we do get people to sponsor books mm -hmm. so that we can give out the books to people freely. Although Prabhupada didn't much like that, he, no, he didn't mind, but he thought it's nicer if they can give something. Because if they give something, if they give some of their hard-earned money for a book, then that's to their credit, that they're doing some service. If they don't give anything, they didn't do any service. But if they give something of their hard-earned money, then they're doing service, they're getting benefit, because they bought a book. You give them the book free, they didn't do anything, they just simply took the book. It's better if they can give something. So we do try to get people to contribute for the, for the value of the book, not for our own self, but for their benefit, that they need to do service for Krishna. We want to engage them in Krishna's service. So we try to get people to come forward to volunteer. We need volunteers. I was doing the book fair in Singapore here a few years ago. We were doing a book, we had a book table that was, that was somewhere in the, in the city. Remember, it was the and the Rai. And we had a table and we were sat. And next to us there was a Christian group. And they had a big sign up. We need volunteers. So I thought, oh my goodness, this is what we want. We need to do that, you know, we need to have volunteers, you know. People, and young people were coming to, I want to volunteer. Okay, great, you know, we have a lot of service for people. Come and do some service at our center and take part, come and do some, help to cut and clean, help to go to market and bring the boat up from the market help to get the temple ready and help to clean the temple after the program. There's so much service to be done. And if people will do service, that is for their benefit. By serving, they will get a taste to chant and to hear about Krishna. So we do try to engage people in some service. Sushru Shro Shraddha Vasudev Kataruchi, Shanmahat Sevaya Vipra, Punya Tirta Nashevana. By serving the devotees who are free from sin, great service is done. By such service, one gains affinity for hearing the message of Vasudev. So we try to engage people in service. Mahat Sevam Dwara Mahor if you serve the devotees, it opens the doors to liberation. So we try to engage people. Come forward and do some service. Help us to distribute Krishna consciousness. So we have many programs, many and we can do more if we get more volunteers. So we're, we're encouraging people like that. Let them come, do service, and by serving, they will get a taste for chanting. Roma Padaswami, one of our very senior devotees who comes here in Singapore, he was talking one day about how he became a devotee. And he described how he drove for hours to come to the Boston Temple and he got to the Boston Temple and it was Sunday afternoon and they just finished the feast. 
they just finished the feast and he came to the temple and they, you know, they, they welcomed him, him in and, and they asked him, would you like to help do some service? He said, yes, I've come here to do service. So they said, okay, they take him down to the, the pot room where all the pots were, where they'd done all the cooking and he got him to clean all the pots and he was washing all the pots. And he was there in the pot room, for, and he was many spent, spent days going to the pot room, washing all the pots and cleaning the pots. And then after some time, then he told him, he said, "Would you like to come on Sankirtan?" And so he went on Sankirtan. And after he went on Sankirtan, he never looked back, and he went on to to, to do a lot of Sankirtan. So that's very common. You know, we, we need to do service. Help cleaning, help washing, preparing, the pro getting ready for the program, cleaning up after the program. It's, it's spiritual activity. And by doing these things, it cleans, cleanses the heart. I remember when I was a new devotee, before I joined the movement, I was going in the temple one day and the devotee said to me, he said, oh, we're cleaning the temple today. It was a codice. So in the codice, he said, we're cleaning the temple today. He said, would you like to help? And I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought, you know, I'm not very sure. He said, he said, you know, cleaning the temple is cleaning your heart. So I said, okay, okay, I'll help you. Because and give my heart needed to be clean. So, I have to clean the temple. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you Maharaj for giving us a nice class. We hope and pray we can hear more classes. Thank you. 